And we turn now to the battle over Confederate symbols that continues to heat up tonight. The Republican governor of Mississippi has officially removed the Confederate battle emblem from the state flag, the last one in the nation with that design. And earlier this month, NASCAR banned Confederate flags from its racetrack. Across the country, Confederate monuments have been coming down, some by vandals, which prompted President Trump to order the prosecution of anyone who damages these monuments. Tonight, we are joined by Reverend Robert Lee IV, a pastor, author, and the great, great, great nephew of Confederate General Robert E. Lee, who is also his namesake. Thank you so much for joining us, Reverend. Thank you for having me. So I want to start with your reaction to the change of the Mississippi state flag. This was done by a Republican governor and Republican legislature. Did you see this coming? And, and how does this change the conversation? Well, if I'm honest with you, I didn't see this happening in my lifetime. Uh, this is an incredible opportunity to seek justice, uh, to try and right the wrongs of the past by seeking a redemption and atonement for all of these things that have been wrong. Um, I'm not going to lie, I grew up with the Confederate flag uh, in my bedroom as something that I celebrated, the fact that I was related to the man who, who, who was the standard bearer for that flag. But as I've grown, I've learned that there is an importance to address uh, what's going on now and, and to see it for what it is, and that is that white supremacy and racism has been the basis uh, for the celebration of that flag for a long time. And there are more than 1,700 Confederate symbols in public spaces across this country, including many that honor your ancestor. Should each one of those be removed? And, and does some belong in a museum? We have to be willing to contextualize these things one way or another. And for me, personally, I see them as idolatrous. I see them that they have been created into idols of white supremacy and racism, uh, which for many was their original intent based on how they were put up. Uh, so for me, this is a no-brainer. This is an issue of justice and of and, and of peace. You know, if we want peace in our time and the ability to seek uh, e equality and equity for one another, uh, then we must do that by addressing the monuments, uh, not only in stone and in bronze, uh, but elsewhere as well. This is the first domino of many dominoes to fall that could really uh, shape the way we view our future. The first of many dominoes, I think that you're right. And in the past few weeks, we've, of course, seen vandalism of some of these monuments. Where do you fall on that? Do you agree with the president that people who do that should be prosecuted? Well, I'm not going to try and pick a fight with the president of the United States. What I am going to say is that the president of the United States should be supporting this conversation instead of hindering it. Uh, there is a real sense for us that right now, we don't feel the support who are trying to have this conversation in a legal way uh, with people like our president, with people like our uh, state legislatures and state uh, gubernatorial officials. Uh, but for me, I'm seeing other people taking extra legal affairs, and that's up to them. But, but it's all about wanting to be heard. And I think a lot of our communities, a lot of our people in this conversation are not feeling heard. And let's back up to your childhood. You said just a moment ago that you had a Confederate flag in your bedroom until middle school, and of course you bear your ancestor's name. So what did Robert E. Lee mean to you growing up, and at what point did that change, and, and what changed it? Robert E. Lee meant a lot to me. I, I bear the name, of course, so there was some sense of at least being proud to be a Lee. Um, as I grew, I, of course, had the flag and a picture of Monument Avenue in Richmond and a postcard of him from Arlington House in my bedroom. Uh, and, and that was until about middle school uh, when I was in uh, confirmation to join the United Methodist Church I was a member of at the time. Uh, I, I had a confirmation member who was this amazing woman of color named Bertha Hamilton. And Bertha Hamilton uh, said, you know, sweetie, I know you're going to be called to ministry. I know that's what you're after and what you want. But if you want to be called to ministry, you, you can't have that flag in your room. Uh, and I felt that that day. It was for me a sense of a, if I want to serve everybody, I can't have a, a symbol of divisiveness uh, in my room, in my bedroom, a place where I rest my head. I can't have that in there. So for me, this became a personal issue of uh, addressing it not only for my name's sake, sake but also uh, for the reality that this is about more than just me. Historians often note, for what it's worth, that Robert E. Lee was a brilliant general. So do you think, considering that, should any part of his legacy be honored? And if so, how would you say he should be remembered? 
Well, well, Lindsay, I look at it this way. You know, the the reality is for all of us, we will be judged by the entirety of our actions. Uh, Lee, uh, we can give it to him that he was a brilliant tactician, but when the most consequential decision of his lifetime came, whether to uh, secede with his Commonwealth of Virginia and serve as the general there or stay and fight with the United States military, he chose to secede. Um, so to me and to others and anyone who views it with any sense, it, it, he became a traitor to the United States. Um, and of course, he was granted citizenship, but that wasn't until President Gerald R. Ford was president. So there was, there was a real sense that, that he tr betrayed his country. And if that's something we want to celebrate, um, then I think we really need to examine our history. There was a moment in history when he had the opportunity to join the Confederacy or the Union. Any clues in your family tree if he chose the Confederacy because he believed in defending slavery? Or was it perhaps out of a loyalty to his southern roots? And should there be a distinction made when it comes to his legacy? Look, there's no distinction between uh, fighting for your home state, uh, which was ultimately for the state rights to enslave people. Um, we never finished that sentence, and we were never taught to finish that sentence, even when I was growing up in school. Um, even if he was fighting for his home state of Virginia, he was fighting for the continued enslavement of black people. And that, to me, is just, uh, that's not something that we can uh, have in our city squares. That's not something we can have on our schools. Uh, that's not something we can celebrate. And, and lastly, there are so many, as you know, diehards, people who are saying that they do not want their Confederate monuments, statues, flags uh, to be erased or discarded. What do you say to them as a direct descendant of Robert E. Lee? If I can change, you can too. Um, the burden is on us to address this. Um, and we will be far better off as a country and as a people if we're honest with ourselves. Um, the time for lying about our history um, is past, and, and a new cause is upon us. Reverend Lee, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.